So many of you may remember last time's epic group policy video with Michael Cleef and I. Well, Michael Cleef may not be here, but a huge cake in his honor is happy birthday, Michael. So for all of you out in group policy land, I hope you wish him a happy birthday as well. Feel free to leave him a comment wishing him a happy however old he is. I don't think he's willing to tell anyone. My name is Lilia Gutnick, um, and I am so excited to show you some really cool stuff with PowerShell today. Last time, we talked a lot about all of the different stuff that was going on in Windows 7 with a big emphasis on PowerShell and preferences. Well, today, I'm going to show you a piece of that. So PowerShell, we talked about, has a bunch of commandlets, 25, of, in fact, including some really cool ones that set registry values and get registry values. For those of you that saw um, the TechEd keynote, Mark Rasinovich actually demoed setting some registry values, configuring those into a group policy object, and then linking that. Well, setting them is great, but what about getting them? No problem. Get GP registry value and get uh, GP preference registry value can do both of those retrievals. But what about more than registry values? What about all sorts of settings? Well, we don't have a commandlet to do that, but we have something even cooler, and that's a tool we wrote. And by we, I mean my friend Lindsay, a developer on the group policy team. So this is something that you can do as well. She just threw this together, you know, in like one or two minutes, maybe in a side conversation. Right, Lindsay? Well, she'll see. Anyway, um, what this really cool tool does uh, is that it parses through the XML report. Well, how about this? Instead of me talking about it, I'll have Lindsay show you. So in the TechEd um, keynote, Mark Rasinovich demoed how to set a GP registry value. So setting any registry value in a group policy object from the command line. It doesn't have to be an ADMX setting. It can be anything that's got a registry setting. In order to get that setting, you can use the get GP registry value. Before you use any of the group policy PowerShell commandlets, you need to import the module that holds them all. And these commandlets ship as part of Windows 7 um, in, term, in the RSAT GPMC or in the box right away in the Windows Server 2008 R2. So start off, open the PowerShell console, and then say import module group policy. That's how you get them. You need the GPMC to be on there, and then that one line to start any session or any script. Then you can call this command like get GP registry value. Now, Lindsay, what's going on here? So here, like you said, you can see we imported our group policy module. And here we're calling get GP registry value, one of our commandlets. Uh, we're giving it the name uh, GP01. And we're retrieving this specific key under the H key local machine hive so that we can see its value, its type, its value name. Okay. Um, it's policy state. So this isn't the actual string that's associated with what this is, in this case, folder redirection uh, configuration setting, but it is, it's the actual key. So you need to right. be really specific about what key you're getting, but that key corresponds to that ADMX setting. So that, it corresponds cool. to use localized subfolder names when redirecting start menu and my documents is the actual setting. Okay. So what about getting other sort of settings in GPOs, right? Registry settings are great, but there's a lot of other settings that people use, like security settings, like, I don't know, setting logon scripts and stuff, those aren't really set in the same way. So how can we, how can we deal with that problem? Um, exactly. So I have a, written a very simple script here called search GPOs for setting. It's a PowerShell script. Um, and basically, you can search. You can uh, provide a domain name or not provide a domain name. And you can search all of the GPOs in either the domain account you're running under or the domain name you've specified for um, a specific setting. So Wait, wait, wait. Back up a second. You're saying I can search all the GPOs in either the domain I'm in or any other domain for any settings? For pretty much any setting, yes. What do you mean? How One of the commandlets we shipped was, is called get GPO report. Um, so in this case, I want to look at the XML report for security GPO1 because this is where I've set the account lockout duration policy. And um, so I just want to take a quick peek at the XML to see what I want to query for. Can you get other types of reports other than XML? Yep, we can, you can report type, is, you can specify XML or HTML. In this case, we want XML. OK, awesome. So here, uh, one of the parameters to this script is called extension. So what you basically want to do is look at this extension node and take the last bit. So here, extension would be security that we want to query for. And here, I see lockout duration. So I want to say uh, extension security where name is lockout duration, and then return me setting number. So that would be 30, okay. because I set uh, account lockout duration to 30. Okay. okay, so let's see how that looks. 
Okay, so here I'm calling search GPOs for setting. Um, here we can look at the parameters for this. So we have, is computer configuration true or false? Um, As, so is computer configuration it's a false boolean. means that it's user configuration? Right, so okay. true for computer configuration, false for user configuration. Okay. Where um, something, whatever we're looking for in this case, where name is lockout duration, okay, and then we're going to say returned me, so return um, setting number, okay? okay? See, I have it somewhere here. Okay, the so search GPOs for setting, extension security, computer configuration is true, where name Scroll is, to the right. so let me see, where name is lockout duration, return me setting number. All right. Okay, so here I see I have security GPO 2 and security GPO 1, both have set, I've set lockout duration. One has 15 and one has 30. So we, we knew from security GPO 1 how to find it, and now yep. we saw that that setting is also in other uh, GPOs and exactly what that setting is. That's awesome. Exactly. But what if I just want to see like, that they are set, but not necessarily what the value is? Okay, so you could also um, not specify a return parameter. So you could just say, I want to see every GPO that has set, that I've set lockout duration. Okay. And that would say security GPO 2 has that setting, and so does security GPO 1. That's cool. So what else, what else can we do? There's security settings, which are awesome, but what's another example of, of this crazy script? Because maybe, maybe you've just prepped this demo. <laughs> You're only doing it for security settings. How do I know? <laughs> so also, if I wanted to say, you know, let's search for all of the inbound uh, firewall ports that I have open. Here I have firewall GPO 1, where I've set... Um, allow port 448. Okay. So let's look at, let's that say I want to like search. a really common use case, looking yeah. for the different firewall ports. All right. right. So let's say, yeah, let's say I want to search through all the GPOs in my domain and find every port I have open. So every port I've allowed inbound connections. So let's look at, take a quick peek at the XML. Get, I'll, call, I'll use get GPO report again. This time I'm going to use firewall GPO 1. And again, I want report type XML. And here is the XML. Now I have my extension node here. So I can see it's called Windows Firewall. OK. So. Um. OK, so I want to search where extensions. Computer configuration, again, is true. OK. And the extension is Windows Firewall, where action is allow. Okay, so last time it was where name, right? but this time you're looking for the node that corresponds to action. Right, because allow. I want to see all of the uh, inbound ports that are allowed. Oh, I see. You're looking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're looking for those that you've configured to allow. Yep. So if you wanted to look for those that were not allowed specifically, you would change what where action is and then put the different string, like not right. allowed. Okay. Yep, or whatever that would be. I'm okay. not sure exactly what it would be. But, but you can look through the XML yep. and find that. Exactly. So where action is allow, return L port. So here it's 448. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to execute this. I'm going to search for all the GPO. I'm going to search. I mean, it's going to return me all of the firewall ports that I have set to open in this domain and in all my GPOs. So by default, if you don't specify domain, it'll look in the one you're currently working in. Right, the user account you're running as. But you could look in other domains also, right? Yep, as long as you have a trust relationship with another domain, you can specify another domain and, and it will connect to that one. That's awesome. Yep. All right, let's take a look at this. Okay, so here we see Firewall GPO2, very creative, my very <laughs> creative names, has a Windows Firewall setting where action is equal to allow and the value of L port is 440. So I see, see basically I have 440 and 448 open. So, okay, awesome. so you're able to see not only that these GPOs have those settings without knowing whether they're in there or not, but you can also see specifically what setting is set for them. Yep. And it's not just registry settings. It's right. not just ADMX settings. Any setting. As long as what you're querying for, so as long as what you provide in the where is below what you want me to return. It's and below, below or is at the same level in the XML. Okay. Because okay. For, I walk through the XML, find the where, and then return with the return. So parameter. it's anything that shows up in the XML report. Yep. So you could take your script that you put up on the blog, blogs.technet.com slash group policy, <laughs> and, uh, and then interpret that and use it to parse other stuff about the XML also, right? What you've given is like a basic framework and a quick 
and a quick way to be able to look for all these settings. But you could get even more intense and say, okay, if I find like synonymous settings, say you have two of the same setting, you can say I want to reduce redundancy. I don't want to have all the same settings in all these different GPOs. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to clean up my environment and get even more advanced with it. Yeah, there's a endless things you could do. I mean, I wrote this script, basic script to parse the XML in about a day. That's awesome. So. Well, wow, that's because you're a baller. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Lindsay. That was really cool. I hope you guys get a lot of use out of it. I think it's a really awesome. It should solve pretty much all of your problems when you're searching for any GPO <laughs> setting. I, I do. <laughs>